Recording. Hi, welcome to the Style Toolkit. Today I want to challenge this wildly held belief that there is such a thing as a timeless outfit. Think of how fashion history has changed so much since the Paleolithic era. Or then again, maybe not. There is this pervasive idea that if only you buy classic, timeless pieces, you will future-proof your wardrobe from obsolescence. I've seen videos from this influencer, a YouTuber called Lydia Tomlinson. She has a whole channel that is dedicated to styling and her style is very classic, it's very elegant, very put together. But I've seen videos where she'll do these do's and don'ts and she'll show the, the don't, the problem sometimes, the don't is that it's too classic. Her style is centered around building a wardrobe that is very elegant, very classic, very put together. But she also knows how to give these outfits a twist so that they feel fresh and modern and relevant to today. Should these things not be a little bit contradictory? Not necessarily. Every era there is a prevalent silhouette and right now Generation Z, Gen Z, is at the steering wheel. They're having their moment where they get to impact pop culture in general, including fashion. Gen Z loves volume and lots of 90s nostalgia as well, but volume and tailoring, but tailoring with a twist. Taking things that are classic, but presenting them in a way that feels fresh. For instance, if they wear loafers, they'll wear chunky loafers. Or if they wear ballerinas, they might juxtapose it with a very voluminous, oversized outfit to create contrast. Today it's all about knowing how to mix proportions in a way that feels interesting. I see this as a pushback against the previous area, where the millennials were wearing everything very skin tight. The skinny jeans, of course, being the sort of emblematic garment of that era. It had a good long run, people say 15 years, I, I, it, feels, it feels like it was a long time. And nowadays people think it might be outdated, though some people still like to wear it. I believe that if you asked a millennial 10 years ago to come up with an outfit that was timeless, it would maybe look something like this, or perhaps in the late 2010s it might look like this. But if you ask today someone from Gen Z what is a classic timeless look, it might look like this. In the 1990s, a classic look would have maybe looked like this, minimalist, a bit form-fitting, in contrast to an era where fashion was more extravagant and excessive, and perhaps then this is what they would have worn. And you might say, well, surely the people knew the big shoulder pads, that that was going to be a fad, and, you know, what the hell were people thinking, except now, now the shoulder pads are actually back in style. And then there's this dress worn by Jackie Kennedy. Is this classic? This feels pretty neutral, right? And, and it's pretty minimal. It's very simple. You could wear it today. No one's going to bat an eye. No one's going to think it's strange. But it could feel potentially a bit secretarial unless you're able to style it in a way again i think sometimes the way we style things is going to impact how we perceive it notice that her style while we might describe it as very classic timeless elegant it is very much of her time it is very much trend driven it is a response to the mod subculture of the time driven by designers like mary quant um, by courage and also lily pulitzer her outfits were very much on trend. It is hard to grasp just how knee-deep we are in a trend cycle and the things that in 10-15 years from now will seem dated, today they just feel very normal and it's hard to imagine our wardrobes without them. And for some people, these blinders stay on as they age and they continue to wear those things that were fashionable, that were stylish when they were in their 20s. Now, all of these looks, they have some commonalities. They all tend to be quite neutral, 
very simple, streamlined, not overly fussy. They'll either be very plain or have very traditional patterns, like a checkered pattern. Some of these clothes look like they could be worn at an office. If you go for something more casual, like denim trousers, you would maybe pick denim trousers that are not distressed, that have an even wash. You might also want to keep your makeup very neutral, or if you want to be a bit more bold, resort to a red lip, for instance. What this does is it shields you from the micro trends. Things like the short, really, really, really short pleated mini skirt that looks more like a belt or tops in the shape of a butterfly. Things that we're gonna be told to ditch the next season for the next best thing. And I think micro trends, they're not necessarily all bad. A lot of it is silly, but it can be a way to keep things fresh. But on a more medium to long term, you are going to see an evolution in the silhouette. And I don't think that having a wardrobe of classic items is necessarily going to shield you from that. Just to complicate things a little, a micro trend could also involve something that is considered classic. I remember uh, a couple years ago seeing a lot of stores carrying this kind of a v-neck with that contrasting pattern following the V, which in my mind is very reminiscent of that Chariots of Fire vibe. And you could argue that this is part of a larger, more long-lasting trend, which has been um, dressing in this kind of old money, um, quiet luxury aesthetic that everyone's talking about now. The good news is that silhouettes change at a slower pace. Usually the thing that is considered to be super outdated is when you wear the thing that was trending 10 years ago. Now here's a disclaimer, following trends isn't necessary and I think that a lot of times it can be detrimental to developing your personal style. But this is the topic for another video. I think that we have to admit that a lot of these things that we're calling timeless and classic actually are trend-driven and they do change over time. In my opinion, classic should be treated as an aesthetic, a vibe, but something that can evolve over time. And I also think it's an umbrella term. Why an umbrella term? Because the term is a little bit too ample and vague and can encompass so many different styles that each has their own flavor. So the concept is actually a bit relative. For instance, just these last few years, we've seen old money, French girl chic, dark academia, and let's not forget the coastal grandmother. And yet, a lot of people are claiming that the French girl chic thing has been played out. All of these styles play off of the idea of looking classic, elegant, timeless, but these are all very much trends, and a trend, by definition, is not timeless. Another possibility is to resort to vintage styles from other decades. It's not outdated, it's retro. Of course, we only borrow those things from those eras that actually feel cool, because many things don't stand the test of time. But those things that showcased women and, and the men who wore those outfits in a positive light, at least some of them, depending on their body type, those things tend to make a comeback and they will then integrate this collective body of styles that designers and fashion enthusiasts like to draw from and they will keep reappearing. And of course, you can remix this in a way that feels a bit more fresh and less literal. So the reason why we're having this conversation today is that I want to caution you against relying on this idea of timeless, classic pieces that never date. Be careful that you don't use that to hinder you from developing your personal style. It's one thing to dress in classic looking pieces because you love this aesthetic. That's one thing. But do not use it as a kind of a crutch because you don't know how to go out of your comfort zone. If you're not aware and deliberate about your choices, your wardrobe might end up looking a little too generic. You risk ending up with a very bland, very boring wardrobe. A wardrobe that keeps you invisible and dims your shine. What a lot of us are taught to do is to fill our closets with staples like a white button-down shirt, 
black trousers, denim trousers, a blazer, a, a little black dress, a basic white tee. If you're not careful, your wardrobe will feel a bit generic and uh, not timeless, elegant, sophisticated as you wished. For classic to work as an aesthetic, it cannot be defined by that which it is not, lacking a point of view. Consider adding into the mix other adjectives, other ideas, other than classic, just so that when you combine these things together, they feel a bit more fully fleshed out. You might also want to check in with yourself as to what it is that classic means to you. Is it looking like you're affluent or is it the minimalism? Is it to look discreet? Is it looking effortless? Is it looking like you belong in a country club or perhaps the English countryside? What is it that you're actually trying to get at? Because classic on its own, as we've seen, is just a little bit vague. Perhaps what you really like is the aesthetic of a designer or of a house like Dior or Chanel. And then which era of Dior and Chanel? Being able to articulate with more precision what it is that you want your style to be will keep it from looking bland and generic and it will feel more relevant. Your personality will come out through a lot more. And also, don't just adopt a classic aesthetic because people um, on YouTube, stylists, influencers are saying, well, this is a way to make sure that you're not going to commit a fashion faux pas a fashion misstep. With classic style, we're often looking at pieces that are very polished, minimal, sleek, and I find that personally I look better when I have texture and a bit of theatricality and some earthiness and maybe you like your clothes to feel a bit more rustic or maybe you're really into athleisure. Your personality and sometimes your physical features as well can really help inform you whether something is right or wrong for you and for me, classic is just not at the top of my priority when I'm getting dressed. So what do we do if, if there's no such thing as something that is truly timeless? We try to understand what works for us and what feels authentic to us. And also, it's okay to adapt and evolve your wardrobe. You don't need to have a wardrobe that is going to be future-proof 10 years from now because you're likely going to buy new things anyway right? You're going to want to adapt these things anyway, because otherwise you'll get bored. Doesn't mean that you're going to be in a cycle of overconsumption. You can do this at a very steady, easy pace. Overconsumption, I think, is more about not really knowing what your style is. And so you're just buying a bunch of things to see what works and what doesn't. And you end up not wearing a lot of those things. So no, I don't think there is such a thing as a timeless outfit. There are some outfits that have more staying power and which have a greater chance of making a comeback. Assuming humanity has not extinguished itself, at some point there will be a technological transformation so great and our socio-economic conditions will be different. So that fashion is going to also look very different. And the clothes from the 20th century and of the 21st are going to feel very distant and quaint and obsolete, like wearing something from the Renaissance. 